Um, all right, Coach. Outside zone, um, is it is it a full zone scheme for you? Is it a pin and pull? Do you do both? How much of a part of it is the offense? Well, here, uh, pin and pull is a different scheme. That's all right, because we're focusing on zone. So yeah, we so just did zone, wanna, yeah, just we're talk just zone. doing our zone scheme, then it's full zone, and it's just outside targets now. So if I have a nine, I'm trying to get my hat to the outside. I want the stripe of my helmet to finish outside his stripe. Right. Okay. Um, obviously, all the calls are the same, though. Triples and doubles, it's just targets are different. Foot targets works, outside. Footworks, footwork and handwork is different. How okay. so? Now I want to be more outside, strong hand conscientious because I do know that this is going to hit here if we can. Right. Okay. Now, with all that being said, as I go to reach this guy and he's not going to let me get reached because his coach has done a good job too, then I turn and I zone him out and I take him the way he wants to go and this thing might hit right there because these guys will build a wall here on this backer. You're talking about strong inside hand when you say zone him out? Yeah, okay. I'll switch from a strong outside hand to a strong inside hand right. based on, uh, you know, as we work it. Like, we'll work a drill where I'm blocking that nine technique, and as I go to get him and I go to reach him, he just plays with his outside arm and hand free, and he just is right. scraping, scraping, scraping. So then what I'll do is turn my technique from strong outside where I'm trying to reach him to bang and I've got him and now I keep his momentum going that way right. and now we'll be like boom and it'll turn into a slash because not all the time definitely against a nine we're not going to get it now right. here six techniques we can get it seven techniques we can get it but now you have that combo right to the front yeah. side and if we match. play a lot of nine techniques we're not doing that we're doing pin and pull stuff for the most part why because you get the down angles yeah we get the angles but for that guy, if you have a nine... Now, I've been at a place where we did both at the line of scrimmage where it was just called at the line of scrimmage. So we could go from a zone, like zone play. Right. Same thing. No one changes. It's just us that change <clears throat> by a call. We just make a call. So we could be running outside zone here. No problem, right? We, we feel like tight end can reach him. We can get this whole thing worked out however we need to work it out. We play somebody that goes from this to somebody like that. A wide nine. Yeah. Exactly. Goes, yeah. We say nine, nine, nine. There's a couple ways we do it. We track up, we pin, we kick, and it turns into like a G. Okay. Yep. Or, depending on who it is, again, we'll base it, make him play contain or win on a pass rush, boom, pull right here, and we'll hit it up inside. And we can do that. That's that in another place, not here, but. Right. That used to be part of outside zone yeah. to us. It was one play, and it was all just based on a call right there. Yeah. So we would, in this look right here, it would start with all calls start from the inside out. So it start with zone. He'd say nine nine nine. They'd go back to tag, tackle around or uh, yeah. tackle down tackle guard around. around. Okay. And we got to play. Yeah. At least it gets us into a positive play. Right. You know? Now, how about like I know in the five, a lot of guys talk about the five nine situation might be the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what under, we do here, five. if we get a five and a nine, let's say we're uh, yeah, this, and you got the uh, like this, like the twenty five front or a thirty four front doesn't matter, either way. And we do, we just you know we can we can zone this. He'll right. play leverage. We can zone it. This would be a double, okay. This outside hat, working, working up to the mic. These guys are working back here to the wheel. He's got to cut him off. We'll book him. Okay. We don't like that scheme because it's just getting too flat. We're not getting any angles. We're not seeing any. We say Ted instead of tag. We say Ted. Tight end and, uh, on a down block. Bang. He pulls and kicks that out. Now, he has to make a decision how he wants to get to the mic based on angles right. and speed. And uh, outside zone turns into that. Yes. Yeah. The, the pin and pull with the ten, uh, with the uh, tackle the tight end. So how about the, we're getting questions on the seven technique working to the sand backer on a full zone scheme, and the correct footwork to use when you got the tight end and the tackle. Your triple, I guess. I'm, I'm okay, so you got a seven. You got a seven and a sack sand. Yeah. You got this sand backer here, is what you're saying. Uh, I mean, he could be a little wider. You know, anytime when you have the tackle and tight end working to second level. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he's got a bucket step and try and take that over. What he's going to do is pick his upside, in, uh, outside foot up, put it down, just like he does on inside, inside zone. zone yeah. We're not stepping away from the technique, otherwise it leaves a gaping hole there. So, so what's, gonna, his, what's his footwork? Is he stepping to the yeah, outside zone? It's going to be bit? almost identical to outside zone based on that technique. We always say, you know, to protect the run and the integrity of the gaps, right. step to technique. So, but it's zone play. So zone, we know we step outside first. Gaps, we step inside first. Yeah. Okay, so in this play, all I'm going to do is pick this one up, put it down. I know the ball is supposed to be coming around here, so this is where I'm really conscientious, but I don't want to stretch it. I'd rather keep it as tight as I can because then my back can get there quicker, right? So I'm going to pick this foot up. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to keep my outside arm and leg free, okay? Stay in square, reading that because this is going to scrape. This is going to be his gap. He's going to scrape to that gap. Then I can pick him. I can cut him. I can pin him. I can do a lot of things. And this is the big block right here. That tackle has to pull and overtake that. Yeah. He's got a zone and overtake that. Is it a zone or is it a pull? Is it a bucket? It's, well, it's, it's, uh, it's basically drop and pull and get your hat across that block. Yeah. It do just you guys depends talk on about how wide he is and who it is. Okay. Do you guys talk about like rip to reach in those terms? Yeah. Do you guys use those terms? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the age-old question, at what point, you've probably heard this many times, at what point do you get off and work to line, is it wait till you get to linebacker depth? Before well, ideally, you'd like to knock this guy into that guy. Right. Okay, yeah. again, we're at the point. Right. Okay, so what we want to do is allow no penetration, mm -hmm. okay? Ideally, what you want to do is keep the guy exactly where he started. You don't want any penetration this way, and you don't want any stretch that way, because it all makes the back have to bow. Yeah. And it slows down the run. So what we try to do is teach them, you know, the proper footwork, feet fit finish. We talk about that all the time. You get your feet right, you get your fit right. right. You get your fit right, you can finish right. So if we knock this guy, keep him at least at a stalemate until we get here. We're all matched up. We're squared up. Now we're working four eyes on two guys, our four eyes on these two guys. And now right. we can see what's up. What's the biggest mistake you see in a combination box, whether it's inside zone or outside zone? The they penetration, right? The bleeding. Split. The split. What, what's the what's the mistake? Because they don't get hip to hip. They don't step right. They don't step big enough. The tackle doesn't step to it, or the tight end steps too wide. Okay. Um, the tight end may step with his inside foot first, uh, which sometimes, if he steps with his inside foot first, and then he steps with his outside foot, then his third step, and this guy, it just doesn't time up. I was just short. wondering the timing. If, if, if that tackle stepped with his right foot first, yeah. and that tight end stepped with his right foot first, how do they wind up getting hip to hip at the same time? Because he's not going anywhere, remember? It's just... He's going vertical. He's not going that way. Right. So you're saying by the time that second foot's down, yeah, it should they time should up. should both be on each other. All right. So, you know, my first step is boom, boom. Okay, so... Boom, boom. My second step is when basically that tackles with me, and I'm, we're on a guy right here. Right. And and this is my power step. This is a timing step, power step. So it's here. It's boom, boom. Now I'm underneath him. I'm lifting him up, and the tackle's underneath. And now we got our hands on the guy. I have one hand on the guy. Hopefully, yeah. He's got two hands on the guy, and four eyes on these two guys. And now we got a shot to execute the block. But if I step, like you're saying, if I step here, then we do have a gap problem. Right. Because now I just opened up a gap where the tackle can't close it in time, and then he penetrates. And right. And it's over. But if he's a wide shade, you would step wider, but you, won't, you wouldn't need step help to from technique. that tackle anymore. Yeah, step to technique. If he's out there, then I'm stepping with my outside foot. First, same thing, second step up the field. Tackle's on my hip, he's looking here, and now he's tripling up. And it's for you, it's the... I forgot the stripe. Yeah, right? stripe the stripe the Okay, okay. So when I'm watching film, I sit there and go, your stripe is on the inside of the DN. We have no chance to get this ball outside. Right. Gotcha, coach. Okay. So, you know, that's the barometer. Uh, backside of the outside zone. Is it just pure cut? Is it rip to run? With run to reach? What do you... It do you is... Say? We go, what I tell my guys, C-gap through to the backer spot to the free safety. So I'll say C to free. Now if I don't have a C gap threat, say I got a guy here yep. and a guy here, 
I don't have a C gap threat. He's going that way, I'm ripping. I'm going to that linebacker, and if I can cut him, I'm cutting him. If that linebacker passes me, I'm not going to chase him in the back. I'm going to that free safety. Okay. Okay. If I have C gap, if I have a C gap threat, I am flying to get my hat across here. All right. And he is. I know he's flying to get to. Now he's going backer. To the safety. So it's a flatter step now. It's a flatter step, and you're flying, running because you don't feel like that ball's ever coming back here. So you got to, that ball's hitting from really, really the tackle's midline to the sideline. What's the, is the back outside hip of the tight end? Is it one yard out? Inside What's hip of the tight end. Inside hip of the tight end. Inside okay. hip of the tight end to the sideline. So it could slash right there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got we got ten minutes. Oh, so I want to get you out of here. Do you have any film or, or anything loaded up? I, I don't know. I, okay. I have to see. If not, I we'll have finish it up here. Up. I definitely don't have it loaded up. I have to check. Okay. Let's see if we got anything. 